Hi, it's Kyle from Bitewing Games, and today we're learning how to play Potions of Azerland, a brand new game, beautifully illustrated, all about potion brewing. In Potions of Azerland, you are a potion master, collecting ingredients, brewing potions to sell to visitors, or drinking them yourself to unlock abilities. The point of the game is to win, and you win by having the most points. Points are earned primarily by selling potions to visitors, fulfilling their orders, but you can also earn points at the end of the game for leftover tokens. Let's jump right in and take a look at the setup. Set out the main board and round tracker board in the center of the table. Randomly select and place five round bonus tokens on the round tracker board. Shuffle the market cards, placing the deck next to the board, and place two cards per player face up in the market. Place the dice, apprentice tokens, gold, resources, and potions on the main board. Organize the visitor cards into three piles based on the number of potions required. Set aside the three infinity visitors from the two potion group, creating a fourth pile. Shuffle the one cost pile, select two visitors per player, and place those visitors on the main board. Next, create a draw pile. Shuffle the infinity visitors and place two in this draw pile. Shuffle the three cost visitors, add one card per player, so for our three-player game, we'll add three three-potion visitors. Finally, shuffle the two-cost pile and add six, ten, or fourteen two-potion visitors, depending on the number of players. Return all the unused visitors back to the box. Shuffle the draw pile and place it above the round tracker board. Reveal one card per player. Each player will select a color and take the player board, priority holder, and tokens of their color. Each player will also take priority tiles, one through five, three novice ability discs, and three study track discs, and a reference sheet. Randomly give cauldrons to each player. Use the cauldrons for the given number of players, so in a three-player game I'll use the one, two, and three cauldron. Look at the main board and give players starting resources based on their cauldron number. Place the novice ability discs on their indicated spaces. Stack the study track discs on the left space of the study track. Place your three cubes on the novice section for each potion. Place your hypnosis token on the matching spot, and place your prestige disc on the start space of the game board. All right, we're ready to play. The game will be played over six rounds, and each round you will refresh, prioritize your tiles, drink potions, and then execute the actions. I'll go over those steps in detail, but first let's take a look at what each of the actions are. The different actions are shown here on the round tracker. And there aren't really turns in this game. I don't take all of the actions and the player to my left takes all the actions. It isn't that type of game. Rather, we'll all take the first action. Each of us will take that action, and then we'll take the next action, and each player will take that action until we've all completed all of the actions. Each round, you will indicate your priority for specific actions using your priority holder and tiles. The person with the lowest number on any action will take that action first. You'll typically get more of that specific action or have first dibs at that action if you have the highest priority. But sometimes you might not want to take an action. In that case, simply flip your tile around, taking gold instead of taking that action. Let's do a very brief overview of the actions. Foraging lets you take raw resources. Studying allows you to become better at potions, moving your skill from novice to intermediate to expert, unlocking abilities. The market will allow you to buy resources or other goodies with gold. Brewing allows you to convert your resources to potions. And fulfilling is how you give potions to visitors, fulfilling their orders and earning points. Or you can skip an action and do work around town, earning gold. Okay, so step number one of the round is to refresh. Since we just set up for the game, we don't actually need to refresh now, so we'll get to that after we've gone through the rest of the round. Step number two is to organize your priority tiles. Each player will secretly and simultaneously place their tiles one through five into their priority holder. Place the priority holders face down in the center of the table when you're ready. Step three, drink potions. Players may drink any potions that they have in front of them. And it will be done in cauldron order. So the player with the lowest cauldron will drink as many potions as they want. 
then the next, and so on until all players have had the chance to drink potions. When you drink the potion, you will gain that potion's effect. If you drink a potion while at the novice level, move the matching marker to the right of your player board, unlocking an ability. Each time you drink a potion, you will discard the potion and gain a benefit. To start the game, you are a novice, so you'll only be able to earn the novice effect. As the game progresses, you can unlock the intermediate or expert effects. For example, if I drink a blue potion, and I'm at the intermediate level, I can choose to take either of these effects. I'll go over the specific effects at the very end of the video. But onto step four, execute actions. Once all players have had a chance to drink potions, reveal all of the priority holders, turning them face up. Activate the actions from left to right. The player with the lowest numbered priority will complete that action, and then the next person in priority order until everyone has completed that action. At that point, move the round tracker to the next space and take the next action. Let's look in depth at each of the actions. When foraging, players will roll dice to earn resources. The first person to take the action will roll more dice, and that is determined by the number of players. This shows you how many of each action players get. So for our three player game, the first player gets to roll four dice and collect those resources. The next player will roll three dice, and the person with the lowest priority will roll two. Throughout the game, you may see this symbol. This is an apprentice token. This apprentice must be used before taking an action. In this case, the apprentice lets you roll additional dice. So if you were the third player, you would normally only roll two dice, but you could use two apprentice tokens, and then you would get to roll four dice collecting those four resources. The study action lets you increase tokens up the study track. The number of spaces you move is again determined by the player count in the same way. So if you had the highest priority for study, you would move four spaces up the track. And you can use apprentice tokens to help you move even further. You can move one token four spaces or split up the movement however you'd like. If you cross or land on a forage space, roll one die and gain that resource immediately. As you move up, you'll eventually hit intermediate or expert spaces. Move your token down to remind you that you now have access to new options when you drink potions. In the intermediate level, you will gain an extra point for each visitor you fulfill that has that type of potion. So when you get to intermediate blue and fulfill this visitor, you earn seven points instead of just six. And if you are in the expert region, you would gain eight points instead of six. The next action is market. Unlike the previous actions, you won't use this information. This symbol means first come, first served. So the player with the highest priority will go to market first and buy as many cards as they please. Pay the cost in gold to gain the benefit shown, and discard the card. The card is not immediately replaced. Players can also choose to exchange two of any resource for another resource during the market phase. The brew action lets you brew potions. The number of potions you can brew is again determined by the numbers listed here. The cost for each potion is shown on your player board. Pay the resources to gain the potion. Apprentice tokens allow you to brew one additional potion per apprentice token you use. The final action is the fulfill action. Like the market, this is a first come first served. When you take the fulfill action, you will fulfill as many visitors as you like, then the next player will fulfill. You can only fulfill orders of visitors in the town, not the visitors here which are on their way into town. Return the listed potions, place the card near your player area, and gain the points shown on the card. Don't forget to gain bonus points based on your study level. When fulfilling visitors with multiple potions, you'll only earn points for the lowest study level that you're currently on. So in this case, both red and yellow are expert, but blue is only intermediate. So you just earn one bonus point for this visitor. Some cards show a rainbow potion, which is a wild. You can use any potion to fulfill that requirement. When fulfilling visitors with wilds, you can still gain bonus points for the indicated potion ignoring the potion type you used for the wild. Aside from giving points, visitors also give you a benefit. Instant effects are triggered immediately. For example, take one potion of any color immediately. Once per round effects can be used once per round. If you take the effect on the left, you gain the bonus on the right. Drink at least one potion, gain a gold. To help you remember if you've taken this bonus this round, rotate the card horizontally and endgame effects give you points at the end of the game. 
Gain one point per visitor that required a blue potion. Finally, some visitors are infinity visitors. The infinity visitor can be visited multiple times by you and or other players. If that infinity visitor was used this round, discard it at the end of the round. Okay, so we're gonna jump back now to step one, refresh. To refresh, remove any cards left in the market. Refill the market, just like you did at the start of the game, with two cards per player. Visitors that did not get visited remain in town. Visitors by the round tracker are moved into town. There's no limit to the number of customers that can be in town. Reveal more visitors equal to the number of players. Reveal the next round bonus. And if you used any of the once per round visitors you've collected, turn the card back to its vertical position so you know you can use it again this round. Move on to steps two through four, ordering your priority tokens, drinking potions, and executing actions, and continue in that fashion until you've played six rounds. At the end of six rounds, you will have gained points by fulfilling customers, and you'll also score points for your end of game visitors. Additionally, you'll score one point for every two gold, one point for every two apprentice tokens, and two points for each potion you have remaining. You don't score any points for leftover resources, so use them or lose them. All right, you may be asking, what if two players put the exact same priority for a specific action? Who goes first? Well, the player with the lower cauldron will take that action first. But to make things fair, you'll then switch cauldrons. So in a two-way tie, the player with the lower cauldron will go first, and then swap cauldrons. In a three-way tie, the first and third players swap cauldrons. And in a four-way tie, the first and last swap, and the second and third swap. You are basically ready to play the game. To finish off, I'll just go over each of the potion abilities and what they do. If you drink a yellow potion while at the novice level, you unlock a private black market. Each round, you'll place two market cards next to your board. If you take the market action, you can buy these cards in addition to the regular cards. They will be refreshed each round, just like the regular market. If you drink a red potion while at the novice level, you unlock Persuasion, which lets you take apprentice tokens instead of gold when doing work around town. And for proficiency, you will roll two additional dice any time that you take the forage action. So if I were to take the forage action here, instead of just rolling one dice, I would get to roll three dice, still just taking the one resource. So as a reminder, each time you drink a potion, you get to gain the benefit depending on where your study level is. So for yellow, when I drink a potion, I can take two gold when I'm at the novice level. If I'm at the intermediate level, I could choose which of these two actions to take. This symbol's going to change in the final version, I believe, but this lets you draw cards from the market to gain resources. Draw cards from the deck one at a time, up to six cards. You can stop any time, but if you reveal three of this symbol, you must stop. For each card you reveal, gain one resource of any type, ignoring the other symbols on the card. If you reveal three of the symbol, you do have to stop. You still gain one resource per card that you flipped, but you do have to lose two prestige. If you don't have any prestige to lose, you just don't take any resources. The final yellow ability allows you to replace any of your priority tiles with a zero priority tile, which beats out a one in turn order. For the red, gain two apprentice tokens. For intermediate, when you drink a potion, it allows you to gain one coin from each player. No matter what, you will gain three gold with this action. If there are fewer than three players, or if a player can't pay, take that coin from the bank. Finally, this action lets you hypnotize or reserve a visitor. Leave the visitor on the main board, but you are the only player allowed to fulfill their order. Treat each potion as a wild potion. So this visitor requires three potions of any color. Hypnotized visitors award an additional four points, but they don't award any bonus prestige points based on your study level, since the potions now count as wilds. When you drink a blue potion, at novice you gain any two resources. For intermediate, move up six spaces on the study track. For expert, roll the potion dice, which will award both potions and prestige. And now you know how to play Potions of Azerland. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.